big fan of Brittany Brown. I am. I am. I love. I love Brittany Brown. She she's a certified dog, man. She going out there and she she handling business, man. She is our Diamond League champion in the two hundred meters. Uh, and congratulations to her. She ran a race. She ran a race really textbook, let off the gas a little bit in the end, but she dominated the race from start to finish. She runs some amazing curves, mm -hmm. uh, which was which I love to see. And it was a pretty easy win for her. Uh, I remember she talked about uh, and 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 one of the races she was like she kept getting the outside lane, but it looks like that's her preferable lane now. That's, that's the her lane, lane she's bro. picking now. She's like, <laughs> that's her lane. <laughs> that's her lane. She she's running some of the best times. She's made the team from that outside lane. She's mm -hmm. running some of her best times from the outside lane. So I think from now on, when we see her and meet, she's definitely gonna have an agent negotiate an outside lane. What do you think about the race, uh, Justin and T? Go ahead, T. Go ahead, T. I was just like iffy because of the weather, you know, like I really wish that it was a little sunnier for the girls, for everybody that competed on those two days because like we would have saw better performances. But yeah, Brittany Brown definitely had herself a good year. And I really hope that she's in a lot of more of these conversations now. Like, I think it's time, guys. Start telling her story on the broadcast. Start pointing her out as one of those top contenders because that's kind of still being left behind. So I think it's time to like bring her story where it's a, close to her performances because she's performing. She's racing. She's running fast. She's winning. She's dominating champ like give her her credit she has an olympic medal like i think it's time you know yeah i, I agree with you 100 she had an amazing season like mm -hmm. the moment she said enough is enough y'all stop giving me these disrespect for outside lanes <laughs> our girl brown just started rolling out dog <laughs> yeah. just started yeah. rolling out man and, and then on top of that going out there winning olympic medal getting the, being a diamond league champion i mean those are those are individual dreams that you want to accomplish. To accomplish mm -hmm. those all in one year, like that is, and, and then she's growing. You could tell she's growing with each race. She's she's coming more comfortable with her running style, her form, and competing at that level. Like she built to be here. You know what I mean? She mm -hmm. always said, "I never, I never was an NCAA champion. I never had all these accolades that a lot of the other sprinters had. It was the fact that I I know where I wanted to be." And then she got there. And that's that's what we see it now, man. It's, it's the fact of this is what track and field really is about. Athletes who go unrecognized for so long, but their love for the sport and believing in themselves holds tried and true. And they go out there and that moment happens and they and they make it big. And that's where she is. She got signed this year, got a whole nother contract. Come on, man. Look. Hey, Rick, tell, just give me my money. Yeah. I, I, I definitely like that for her. She's definitely winning. I definitely, I definitely think that we don't have to talk too much about her because she's doing her talking on the track. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. By her winning, her story will definitely come to fruition because as she, even before she got the medal, I was telling people once she made the team, like she was on my radar. You know, I, I was saying I am a Brittany Brown friend. I like her story and I like the way uh, she goes about handling her business. Now, to the other thing, I knew she would have wanted to run against Sydney. I know it didn't permit, but Sydney ran 2240, she ran 2220. I want to ask both of you if Sydney was in that race, is there a change in the outcome? Does Brittany Brown still win or does. Or does Sydney win in that situation? You know what? That's a, that's a <laughs> tough question. That's a tough question, but we're gonna get into it. Um, honestly, I think it would be it would be a much faster race for sure. Like they will push each other. Um, I don't know. Like Sydney doesn't have that many races, so that's why I kind of will give it to her. Cause she hasn't raced that much this season. Like she went from Paris and took like a long break. So I feel like she would be maybe a little fresher than Brittany. So I don't know though, but it would be a, it would be a, I, I, it would have been faster. That's all we could ask for. It would have been way faster than what it was for sure. Like they definitely would have felt that push from the start. I'm gonna give it to Brittany because she has been finding her niche in her own event this season, right? But mm -hmm. it ain't gonna be. It wouldn't be an easy win for Brittany uh, at all. I'm gonna say that because you see how Sydney is. Sydney uh, evaluates her field that she's running against. She knows what effort needs to go out there. And she's not scared to run against the clock, but she's also not scared to run against other athletes. So mm -hmm. I believe that 2240 was because she cleared the field 
and she had no one pressing her. So she just ran for the time and she just kept turning over. And that's the time that came up on the clock. Do I think she can run faster? Yeah, I think she run faster. She opened up with 22-0. So you know that she mm -hmm. has it in the tank for this season. Um, but once again, I mean, you got dog for dog. That's going to be a hard one. And that's when, that's when you get the popcorn. You got to go to this concession stand before this race starts. Get that popcorn because this is a dog for dog kind of situation. So maybe this is something we'll see in the future. Maybe we'll see both of them race against each other in the future. I would like that. What's up, RSG fam? You ever popped the blocks too hard and you forgot your deodorant? Damn, dog, you nasty. You got to keep deodorant on at all times. You're going to be smelling funky. Nah, bro, I'm good. Because Mando's got me with their whole body deodorant from the founders of Lumi. Formulated with mandelic acid, Mando has a long-lasting effect. We talking 72 hours of odor control. It stops odors before it even starts. And best of all, you could put Mando everywhere. We're talking about the pits, feet, knees, back. Package everywhere. Mando has cologne quality scents. Here's my favorite, bourbon leather. You got to check it out. I love the fact that Mando lasts a long time. And Justin is in line. Bourbon leather is a scent that you have to try. I've tried it everywhere. And trust me, even the wifey noticed it right away. Strong enough to put anywhere, but gentle enough to put even on the family jewels. And that's because it was created by a doctor. It's aluminum-free, bacon soda-free, and even cruelty-free. Mando Starter Pack is perfect if you want to try it out. And your starter pack, you'll get solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two products of your choice. Like mini body wash and deodorant wipes. And of course, you get free shipping. You know Mando's always got you to keep you smelling right. New customers get $5 off a starter pack when you use our code. That's equivalent to 40% off your new starter pack with our code RSG. That's code RSG at shopmando.com. S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. It's time to smell better naked. Trust me, your partner's going to thank you for it.